Welcome everybody to another episode of Off Grid with Brad and Kelly. We've got some homestead chores that we are working on today. We've got to feed the chickens like you do every day, but we are working to propagate or get ready our mealworms and our crickets. Now we had a die off in our crickets. Uh, it looks like the ones that we got were not hardy enough for our area of the southern end of the Appalachian Trail. So we have to order some other ones. What kind did we order, Kel? Banded crickets. We ordered some banded because they take a little bit higher humidity. They can take a little bit more of a fluctuation of uh, temperature. And they have a longer lifespan. And a longer lifespan. So our crickets are inside of a mixture of organic soil and sand. This mixture allows them to uh, kind of mimic the natural environment that they would be in. Also, we put cups in there or salad dishes. These salad dishes are what they lay their eggs in. Now, what are you looking for, Kel, for their eggs? How do you know they're laying? Um, you just keep it wet. You can watch them and see if you see them going and laying eggs in it. Other than that, you change the dishes out every two to three days and you watch the little pinhead crickets. And what does pinhead mean? Uh, like they're the size of, like they're super duper teeny tiny little crickets. Like uh, the size of them. Okay, how do you know they're laying eggs? You, I or mean, you just guess. You just guess. You just watch them, see if they're laying them. You know, they'll go on the dirt, you'll see their butts go in it. That kind of thing. Okay. And so, you just watch. and you have to switch out the egg trays how often? The, the dirt egg leg? Yeah. yeah like two to, every two to three days. Okay, so every two to three days we put those into another container. <clears throat> that other container is just kind of like the hatchery container that we keep separately. But one of the other things that we ran into, a problem with, the mealworms are doing great. We have like 10,000 mealworms that's going to turn into like 800,000 mealworms at the high end. So you guys are going to watch us through that entire process. One of the other problems that we had is the crickets didn't have enough scaffolding. And because they didn't have enough scaffolding, they kind of like just trample on each other. When they trample on each other, they kind of eat each other. They're pretty weird creatures. So we have to build some scaffolding, but for that we have to get wire cutters uh, to be able to do that. So we're gonna go through our shipping container, see if we can find some, and you guys come with us. This is the container that we dropped on our off-grid and bulletproof video. We knew we had some of our tools in here, but some of the tools might be at another location. So we're gonna look here and see if we can find them. I'm giving my brother, you know, he's starting a uh, kind of like an off the grid or a homesteading journey here in the Southern Appalachian Trail. I'm giving him this propane tank that he's going to use. He just picked up a Facebook marketplace you okay, babe? I'm looking for a flashlight. Okay. He just picked up a Facebook Marketplace stove for like $350. It was like a $800 stove. So please watch the frugal deals. We None of us can afford to buy new anymore. So whether we're thrifting our clothes from, uh, you know, bins at Goodwill or we're at the flea market or, you know, trying to save as many dollars as we can, we want to build our homestead out as quickly as possible. I wanted to show you guys this. This is that goat that was beating up the uh, chickens. He made an amazing goat stew. So I want to keep the head and keep the bones and I wanted to do this as easily as possible uh, and as naturally as possible. So I wanted the sun to bleach him. I wanted the ants to eat the flesh off. I wanted the beetles to get in there with the uh, muscle and the tissue. So to keep critters from taking him away, first I had it just on the ground on an ant pile, and then I zip tied his horn off. I already took the keratin sheath off of the top of the horn, and my brother wants to turn that into a, uh, for muzzle loading firearms, black powder firearms. He wants to turn that in to keep the black powder. <clears throat> so that already came off his horn. The rest of him is there, and we're going to make some cool things out of it. I'm going to go back with Kelly and check and see if she found that yet. Hey. 
This is the 10 by 16 that we originally had as like a micro cabin. And uh, that's what we're gonna be using for our reptiles and our uh, breeding of the crickets and the mealworms. So let's see if it's in there. Well, I think I found what is going to do it. Yep. Um, so let's take these back, get them a sharpen, and see if we can get those uh, corrugated scaffolding made. Okay, so it's time to sharpen these up. Uh, just try to make as quick work as possible. They're pretty rusty from being in the uh, humidity and then being in that shipping container. So we're just going to take a uh, sharpening uh, stone, I guess you would call it. This is a uh, diamond stone and we're going to try to bring a little bit of edge back to it. Okay, let's go see if we can uh, find the fence and get this done. Now this is probably a thin enough wire that the bigger crickets could use as it stands, but uh, we want the small ones to also be able to kind of like live on it. We grab the camera. Mm -hmm. We want the small ones to also be able to uh, climb up it and get away from the other crickets. So we're going to kind of like build a, a pyramid or like a, a porch or something inside there so that they have a little bit of a pitch that they can be climbing up on. Mm -hmm. And it bends pretty well. This is, we have these for our rabbit coops and you see it holds a bend pretty well. And I could just set it up there right like that. And uh, if we make like a lot of curves of those, it gives them more square footage. So you were thinking like? Like almost corrugated. Okay. If I don't that know makes how many would we bring a tote over here? Uh-huh. And uh, let me see how many would fit in there. So we have the crickets and mealworms inside of these 30 gallon totes. They're plenty big enough on the surface area on the bottom. Oh yeah. It just to maximize how many you want to put in there. They need more space so they don't only have this bottom edge. So my thought well, was to give like a corrugated thing. Okay. That was my idea. So I think to do that because it's longer than the piece, mm -hmm. I'll have to cut and we'll have some waste here. Or I could just make a whole bunch of smaller. Yeah, we can just make a bunch of little like pyramids. Yeah. Like cut it. And then fold it and put it and in. And then fold stack it. Stack them on top yeah. of each other. Okay. Yeah. Enrichment. So Kelly is also going up against her better judgment and she is ordering roaches. What kind of roach? Discoid and roaches. Why discoid roaches? Um, well, they're very good protein for chickens and reptiles. Okay. And, um, but the other kind is dubia is also a common one, but they are not legal to have in many states. So you gotta watch out so, for the yeah, legality. Right, yeah, you have to watch the legality of it and all of that. So I got the discoid, which are also very hardy. They have a, you can kind of leave them all in the same tub. You don't really have to do the separation of eggs or they have nymphs, they have live. Oh, little, live birth? Yeah. Okay. Um, so you just kind of leave them, you know, in the tub. They are hardy, so their living conditions are nice and easy, and a lot of reptiles like them. So we're gonna try breeding. So roaches. we need totes for crickets, yes. totes for mealworms, mm -hmm. and totes for roaches. Yep. Now the reason we're doing this, folks, is because I do not believe that the supply chain is going to continue in the way that we know it. Yep. So if you have uh, chickens or quail, or anything that will eat protein, you're not gonna be able to get it in the same way that you are today. Or even if you are, it's gonna be like three times, four times as expensive. It's, it's really 
crazy how our country and really the world is ruining people by charging so much for things. So mm -hmm. we're kind of like trying to offset what we see coming because you know, if you watch our other channel, uh, we cover a lot of news and information there. We know the direction that things are going. It's about to get really bad for the American people as far as all of our ability to afford things. Mm -hmm. And then the supply chain is going to get hit. A lot of the things that we get are imported from uh, other countries. So as much control as we can have in every aspect, whether you, even if you just have one solar panel, Right. Or you just have, uh, you know, one backup window unit that you can power with a generator. Those are the things that you're going to be able to control when things get out of control. Right. So we want to get ahead of our food production for our animals, especially because these are the things that are going to continue to keep us alive. Right. And we want to start it now because right now the supply chain is not effective and you need some time to build a colony where you can still feed all of your animals and still breed them and right. not run out. So we're trying to start it now. Yeah, because we're learning some things right now that we didn't know. You know, we've always bred mealworms and mealworms were real easy. I mean, mm -hmm. you put them in a pretty humidity controlled environment. Yep. It's going to stop the oats that they eat uh, from molding. Right. And then you uh, give them potatoes for their water. And if you don't have potatoes, you can use basically anything. You can yeah. use squash, you can use so many different things. Right. They're real easy to breed. And I yeah. don't think anybody who has chickens and it doesn't have uh, mealworms is doing enough for their chickens. Mm -hmm. And they're cheap to get. Oh yeah, they're real inexpensive. Like getting 10,000 mealworms, how much was that? 10,000 mealworms was like, maybe with shipping like $50. Like $50, folks, 10,000 mealworms. Yeah. Now, what the life cycle is, they turn from a mealworm into a pupa, mm -hmm. which is like a little chrysalis almost. Yeah. And then from a pupa, they pupate and turn into a beetle. Mm -hmm. And then from a beetle, they uh, get their groove on and they have eggs and the eggs become your next mealworm. Yep. And so with 10,000, you're looking at, even with some loss, you're looking at a 800,000 potential mealworms. Yeah. So you need to start thinking about this, not just as food for your chickens or reptiles or whatever you might have, but also a business. Like $50, $60, you can get started on a business and selling, bartering, trading to, with other people to uh, give them protein to their chickens. Because what happens when your chickens don't have enough protein or calcium? They don't lay eggs. And yeah. if your chickens aren't laying eggs, then you're not getting the most out of them that you can. So that's kind of why we're doing this and why we're working so hard on all of these different parts because I just don't believe that this country is going to make it in the way that it did for the last 100 years. So we're trying hard to get ahead of that curve. We're gonna be setting up our solar. Uh, my biggest priority, I was talking with my brother last night for solar is the well, a window unit, a single window unit, all the lights in the house in a deep freezer. If I can be independent from the grid with those things, then I know that I can control the climate in a room at least, because without climate control, people get sick. I know that I can control food by being able to deep freeze the things that I go out and hunt. I can control my water by being able to bring it up from the well, and I can have lights on. So that means I can fix tools, I can, uh, administer first aid. I can do all these different things. So we're working hard to do that. And I thank you guys for coming on the journey with us. One, to find these today. It was crazy <laughs> looking for these. Uh, two, on seeing what we're doing on building our colonies of crickets and uh, mealworms and soon to be roaches. And three, for being part of our family. So thank you guys for everything that you do. Make sure that you subscribe, hit a hype button if you see it down there, leave a thumbs up and leave a comment. Make sure you check back every couple of days because we've got new videos coming out very often. From my family to yours, please stay safe and keep watch.